have laid out here are the parts for a small brushless DC electric motor that I'm going to show you how to make. I only actually have one ball bearing, but if you have two, that would be better. And a shaft that matches the inside diameter of the ball bearing. And the shaft needs to be a little bit longer than this little jar that I have. This is a, a 3 16 inch steel rod. But this jar is from fishing bait jars. This is a plastic one. And I have four powerful magnets. These are some old neodymium magnets. And I have, this is some enamel coated copper wire. This is just some that I salvaged. I didn't have to go buy this. But if you look around, I mean, depending on where you are, how bad litter is, but you might be able to find like a TV or a microwave or 12 steel screws. You want them to be pretty short and thick. This motor has 12 coils that are broken up into an A set, a B set, and a C set. Each set has four coils. And two coils in each set are wound in one direction. Two coils are in the opposite direction. And each set is in series with itself, so all the A's are in series, all the B's are in series, but each set is separate. The engine operates in a six-step cycle to rotate the magnetic field and cause the rotor to spin. You can see in this hard to look at wiring drawing that the three series of coils are all connected at one end to each other and at each end, at the other end there are three wires, one from each coil series as the input wires for the motor. In the first step it's A plus B plus, meaning that current is flowing in the forward direction through the A and B coils. It starts by a positive signal flowing in through the A plus wire to the junction. And you can see that this makes a north magnetic pole facing inward at each of the A plus coils and a south magnetic pole facing inward at each of the A minus coils. From the junction it flows in the forward direction the plus signal flows into the B plus wire and through the coils, the B series of coils, out the B minus wire to the negative source of the power supply and creates the same magnetic fields. So this shows that both series of coils are on at once, flowing in the A series through the junction, then through the B series and the magnetic field from this causes the rotor to line up with those coils. The next step is B plus C plus. So you have positive signal flowing in the C plus wire through the C coils to the junction, then flowing from the junction to the B plus wire in the forward direction through the B coils and out the B minus wire. Next step is C plus A minus. So it's flowing in the forward direction through the C coils and the negative direction through the A coils. So plus signal comes in the C plus wire through the C coils to the junction, then to the A minus wire and out the reverse direction through the A coils. Next up is A minus B minus. Plus signal comes in the B minus wire through the B coils to the junction. Plus signal flows from the junction to the A minus wire, reverse direction through the A coils and out through the A plus wire to the minus signal. Fifth step is B minus C minus. Plus signal flows in the B minus through the B coils to the junction. Plus signal flows from the junction to the C minus wire, reverse direction through the C coils and out the C plus wire to the negative power supply. C minus A plus is the sixth step. The plus signal flows in the A plus wire in the forward direction through the A coils to the junction then to the C minus wire in the reverse direction through the C coils. And you can see in this simple animation how these stages cause the magnetic field to rotate around. Strip of paper and wrap it around.
cut it off right where it wraps all the way around, so it's one full loop around the jar. Divide this into 12 equal parts with folds. So, first fold it in half. Now that's two equal parts. Now fold it in thirds. Okay. Now that you fold it in half and then into thirds, that's six equal parts. Fold it in half one more time. And that's 12 parts that are at least pretty close to equal. You can see each crease is one twelfth. So now we just wrap that around. And put up it's kind of hard to see the creases on the camera, but put a mark where each crease is. So we've got the 12 equally spaced lines all around it. This exact height doesn't matter that much as long as it's, you know, about right there. Get some kind of a spacer to set your pen on and just make a line at the same height all the way around. So now you can see you have an intersection point there with each one twelfth of the circle line and the line that shows the correct height. So we need to drill a hole at each of those intersections. There, 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 and there. All the way around. And the hole needs to be a hole that these screws fit nicely into. I have those holes drilled now. Once you have that, now you get to do the kind of interesting and difficult thing of trying to put these screws in the holes from the inside. But you can see all 12 screws are in there. They're pretty much evenly spaced. There are some minor differences because of course I'm doing this by hand. So, in order to prepare for winding the coils, pick one screw to start and go A, B, C, then the next one after A, B, C is A, negative, B, negative, C, negative, then back to regular A, B, C, and do this to all of them. Now that you've got those marked, it's time to start winding the coils. So we need our magnet wire and just our cylinder here. We'll start first at one of the A's, regular A. Tape down the end of the wire with a piece of masking tape. Like have a, little, a bit of excess from the A. Tape down the end of the wire and write on it A, a plus and a minus. And this is just gonna be basically categorizing for sorting the wires. It's not really telling you which wire is the plus wire, which wire is the minus wire sorting the wires. So, starting at A, wrap clockwise, and you have to count your turns. So there's one turn, two turns, three turns, four turns, five, six, seven. You have to remember to always do the same number of turns on each one. And remember which way you're turning. 23, 24, 25. All right, so 25 turns. Now we're gonna go down, take the wire, rotate it down to the A negative. We have to wrap it around that one the opposite direction. So we just wrapped that one clockwise 
Now the A, the A clockwise, the A negative now has to go counterclockwise, same number of turns. One, two, three, four, 24, 25. Okay, that's 25 turns on the A negative. Now we can take it back around to the next A, regular A. And then wrap 25 turns clockwise on that again, because the regular A's are clockwise 25 turns, negative A's are counterclockwise 25 turns. So wrap 25 turns on that. And then finally, we go back around to the next negative A and we wrap counterclockwise 25 turns again. All right. So there we have the four A's wrapped. Now you can cut off the wire. We're gonna lift this masking tape up again. So, the plus we have the A piece of tape. The plus goes to the wire that starts at the regular A, the A plus. I didn't write plus by them, but just the regular A, 25 turns clockwise, then runs down to the negative, same number of turns counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and then out to the, the wire with the minus sign by it, which indicates that this wire leads to the negative one. And this is just so we can keep track of which wire is which later. So now we go to the B set and do the same thing. You can see I have all the wires done the way I just showed you. Again, 25 turns clockwise around each plus letter and 25 turns counterclockwise around each minus letter. All, and all the ones of each letter are connected in series, but there's three separate sets. Each set, each letter set is a separate series. We need to drill a hole in the bottom of the center of here to accept the axle. Just make sure it's big enough. And it is, but the lid of the container you can choose to put in the bearing or not. It's not gonna be necessary to have a ball bearings. So we can close the container and you can see, that's fine. That's really not that much friction. Parts that I have set out here are going to be for assembling the rotor. So this is just a piece of wood, but I've got drilled down it a hole that accepts our 3 16 inch metal rod. So for now we can just push that on there. The exact position doesn't matter for right now. And this goes in right there. And the magnets, one magnet is going to mount to each of these flat sides. So we can set aside our main assembly for now. And we have our four magnets. I've marched, e marked each one with a silver side, which is the regular metal color, and a dark side that's colored with Sharpie. And you can see, obviously, silver side and dark side attract for each one. It doesn't really matter which one is actually the north and south pole of it. We don't need to know. So on two opposing sides, we're going to have dark sides of the magnet facing out. And you can see that because of the steel rod in the center, they stick even though they're facing the way that would normally repel. So we have dark side facing out, dark side facing out, opposing each other. And then the other two sides the other two sides will have silver side facing out. Okay, 
So silver side and opposite one, silver side, dark side and opposite one, dark side. This is the completed rotor with four magnets on it, two with black side facing out and two with silver side facing out. The first step in wiring together the sets of wires that we're going to need to come out of here is we need to find the A- wire, the B- wire, and the C- wire. So again, we'll take those out of there now, and we don't have to keep track of them anymore. Once we take these three out, the A-, the C-, the B plus. So these three wires are going to be soldered together now. I've taken those three wires, the A minus, the B plus, and the C minus, and I've matched up their ends in one spot, made sure that the ends are all stripped bare so that there's exposed copper, and twisted them together like this. Now I'm going to solder them to ensure a good electrical and mechanical connection. After soldering that, I have sealed over it with some electrical tape and then I'm going to put a piece of shrink tube over it to ensure that the electrical tape doesn't peel off later. Next. We just need to extend these three wires so that they can reach to the controller. So I have pre-cut a few wire extensions. It doesn't matter exactly how long. They just need to be as long as you want them to be to get between your motor and your controller. So I cut three of them equal length and I'm going to solder them on to here, onto each one of these wires, the A plus, the C plus, and the B minus wires. Okay, I got those three soldered on there, and I wrapped each of them individually with electrical tape so that they can't make contact with anything covered over the solder joint. And each one I gave a flag out here to indicate which one it is so it's easier to keep track of. Again, A plus, C plus, and B minus and I slipped this piece of heat shrink tubing over it. So since we have the labels out here now, we no longer need these labels. Let's slip the shrink tube over it. And this is what our case looks like completed with the rotor out of it, wires attached. To insert the rotor, Put one end of the shaft through the cap, put the shaft through the other hole, it pretty much draws itself right into where the screws are, but it will still need the spacer so that at high speed it doesn't you know, vibrate around too much. I made the spacers out of a couple pieces of used plastic drinking straw. and these will keep the shaft from being able to slide forward and back very much. If you have access to any of these um, RC car or RC airplane brushless motor controllers, these will work with it. I soldered on some of the plugs that go into the end of the electronic speed control, so I'm just going to plug those in, and we'll see how it goes with this speed controller. Okay, so I've got it plugged in. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, I did end up installing the bearing in the front of there, after all. To, that, to do that, all you have to do is drill a hole that's the right size and then super glue the bearing in.
Uh, it has pretty good torque. I can feel it with my finger. It's a little bit scary with these screws sticking out of it like spikes, but... 